Hi guys, this is Matt here at Fine Mods. Um, just a little video to show how to uh, take the contacts out of the new Mech Squonker for any adjustment and cleaning and how to adjust the fire button throw. Um, so to start with, remove the bottle and take the battery cap off. You can just use your fingers for this or coin. And then what you need to do is put your finger inside the battery tube and basically give it a twist. So you use the wedge of your finger. Hopefully you've got a finger that will wedge. And uh, you just wedge your finger in there. And then as you pull your finger out, you give it a little twist. And the battery tube will come out. Now, if you haven't got a, a fat enough finger like me or you can't get enough grip on it, um, just get yourself a pair of our grip gloves um, and that will aid getting the battery tube out. So pull out the battery tube and you'll see that it has a little o-ring on there which helps with the friction fit inside and you'll see the top copper contact. This is the only part that will probably ever need cleaning, the rest is silver plated copper. Um, so you can just clean that with a little bit of scotch bright pad. Um, and that'll you know clean up any discoloration, um, but it shouldn't need much because it's going to, it's going against silver plated. So now inside, I don't know if you can see in there, you can see the contact there, which that's the one that moves up and down with the switch and makes contact on the top here, and the other one is attached to a positive for the 510, and that connects to the side of the battery. Uh, so we need to take this tube out and there's a convenient little slot that I've put in which serves two purposes. It helps you unscrew it and it also means that you can get the tube very close to the bottom of the bottle and it will still suck up juice without getting blocked. So just unscrew that tube and then just tip it and that bit comes out. And then you've got to get this silver plate contact out and usually just a good shake and out it comes. If you want to take um, the rest of the contacts apart then you will need um, a socket that fits on there. Um, let me see if I can find my one, bear with me. Right, you need a 14mm socket uh, long deep socket like that which is you can get these off eBay Amazon they're just a I think a, what they call a 14 mil um, spark plug or shallow fit socket um, I've actually just sanded this down a little bit um, just to make it you know not so tight because they're, they're, they are tight they're normally I think they're 18 mil is the diameter that they come in at you know when you buy them new um, which the hole is 18 um, but I just sanded it down just to you know make it not quite a tight fit in the hole um, so you get one of those on a short extension 3 8 short extension and you can undo the uh, nut which means you can take out the 510 uh, solid let's go ahead and do that um, so put, put that on there If the whole thing spins, just use your grip gloves and just apply a little bit of pressure just to the top of the 510 there to stop that spinning. And you should undo that nut. If it doesn't undo, you can use the Mod Maker 510 removal tool, um, which you can tighten up on the 510 and that will hold it in place while you unscrew the nut. But usually that will just come undone if you just hold it strong enough with your finger. So then you take the nut out there, then you can take the 510 and the washer out, you turn it upside down, the button and top contact comes out. So now if you want to change the button over for one of our walnut buttons, one of our Alton buttons, you can pop your new button in. Um, all the buttons are based on a 12mm diameter button, 
but wood is natural and moves around so if you find that a new button if you try it in first you just drop it in push it down with your finger hold it there if you find it the new buttons that you put in are a little bit tight you can always just sand out a little bit carefully just to give it a little bit more clearance but uh, you know it, it's it's not an exact science but uh, they they all should be 12 mil but there's you know point one of them mil could make it a bit jammy or something but uh, you know just see how it goes you'll also notice in there is a copper washer that may fall out or it may stay in there um, but make sure it's in there when you put it all back together so let's put it all back together shall we um, we're going to need to get our 510 removal tool bear with me this is the mod maker 510 removal tool it comes with this two part section here and two rods uh, what i do is i get one of these little clear gaskets and that comes from stealth vape and it's called an atty gasket but i think the mod maker tool actually comes with a gasket now and i put that on there and that just stops you scratching up your 510 when you screw it on so screw your tool onto your 510 not all the way and then just screw the bottom half and down until it touches and that holds that in place and uh, then we need to get our button so we pop our button in there and then we pop our 510 in like so make sure the copper washer's in there so hold that into place like so and then you get your contact and you notice it's got a sort of a bend to it so it's a bit banana shaped that gives you the spring tension uh, on the firing switch uh, if you need to make any adjustments uh, then you can just you can either do it with your hands or if you get some pliers you can just give it a little bit of a bend just to increase the bend and that is what keeps the the button uh, sort of springed into place and makes it feel nice when you press it so when you put this in you want to make sure that that's a smiley face bend like that so that's going to go in like so so smiley face bend and then you turn it that way and put it in make sure it doesn't flip over the wrong way when you uh, <coughs> put it down and that's in place next <coughs> we're going to put the brass nut on if you just drop it into place that should hopefully land in the right place and you still holding the 510 up from underneath then get your socket and just rest that on there and you should be able to see through here what you're doing you'll see if it's if it's locked onto the nut and then just turn it a few times and then take it out and make sure that the nut is not cross threaded and sitting level and um, because of the silver plated contact and the copper nut there's not that much thread on it so it's, it's only a couple of turns and that once that starts to bite you know that's locked to make sure it looks level that it's not cross threaded and then what i do is i get one of my rods and i put in the lower one and i sort of hold it like so so i rest the mod so i can hold the the 510 tool with the rod and the mod there then i put my socket in get my ratchet on the end make sure it's the right way now i can tighten up the 510 because if you don't hold this it'll just all want to spin so i'm, I'm stopping that spinning with my finger then holding the mod and then tightening this up you don't want to go crazy just like so it's, it's fairly tight but not not crazy take that out and then just back off this with your bar and that's the 510 securely in place 
uh, with the fire button. If you need to make any adjustments, let's like say if, if you see that the fire button's not, uh, you know, doing what you want it to do, then you can take it all off and undo it. See, at the moment I've got the fire button sitting a little bit low, so I'm going to just take that apart and redo that. Okay, I've just uh, took it off and redone it because I wasn't happy with the spring tension. It was just easier to do it um, off camera just because trying to do this under a camera is quite tricky. Um, so anyway, you get that all in, you get the switch how you want it. And next we need to do the trickiest bit, which is put this bit in. Uh, it's got a bend in it and a small hole. And it needs to go in with the bend facing upwards. Um, now I've found two ways that are uh, nice and easy to do this and basically if you get your 510 tool and actually it's probably easier if we do it this way if you take off the bottom nut that will give us a bit more travel And screw this into your 510 and what that does is depresses the 510 core on the spring loaded bit until it stops that basically brings this center pin up more and then if you've got one of these basic coil rods they're available absolutely everywhere this is a tofo one um, with different step sizes for coils like 1.5 2.5 2.5 Put this on until it goes up to number three and that will just sort of wedge there and stop. And then you can put this down and the, oops, <coughs> the small end will just fit into the uh, hole of the 510. So you see that's just now resting in there. If you get some tweezers, you can just rest on this. Put your finger in just to stop it falling down too quickly. So off it comes, then just guide it down with your finger. And when it gets down to the 510, just put your tweezers in just so it goes over the threaded section. Pull out your coil tool. Get your squonk tube, make sure that the slotted end is up and the threaded end is down. Poke that in there, pop it on. I just sort of rest it there with my finger and tighten it up. And sometimes these are a bit of a sod to get started, but you'll notice it will just jam. So just back it off, give it a wheel. And then there we go, you can see that screwing on now. And just nip that up nice and tight. And that's all in there. And then you can take your 510 tool out the top, get your battery, pop your battery back in. That'll be stiff because it's designed to be like a compression fit. If you can't get it all the way in as it is, just put the cap on a little way, just so it protrudes past the wood, and then you just push it down on the surface. If you push it too far, you'll find there'll be no throw in the switch, but just press the switch quite firmly, and that'll just push it back, back it off a little bit. Um, and you can play around with that um, to get the right sort of throw sometimes if you like a you know really touch sensitive thing you can have this up further and that will just be a touch sensitive button if you like a bit more of a defined press you can bring it down a little bit so you've got more of a press um, if you need to make any further adjustment other than the moving the tube in and out then you can take the tube out this one comes out so easily because it's been in and out so many times um, and you can just undo just undo the uh, copper top section um, 
you only have to do sort of do half a turn at a time and that will obviously reduce the distance between that and the underside of the silver contact there thus reducing the throw of the switch as well so you can just play around with you know which which setup works best for you which setting um, because everyone likes a different switch some people like it really gentle just almost touch sensitive and other people like a bit more of a defined press um, but there's enough scope in there to to set it how you like it so that is disassembly of the new mech squonker it's a little bit fiddly but it was the only way to achieve building <clears throat> what i've not seen anyone else do and that is uh, a fully mechanical squonker from a solid block with no you know, some people get rounded by they have a top section with magnets or screws you take that off which allows access um bottom caps um doors you know open up magnet doors but doing it just from one solid block like this keeps the the shape and the lines exactly how i wanted it um with no additional bits to undo um but you know getting your head around the <coughs> internals with allowing access and adjustment was it took about three months and about four failed prototypes but uh, happy with the end result a little bit fiddly to do but well worth it i think so if you need any help um if this video is you know still making you scratch your head and you need some help just you know drop me a message and i'll um talk you through it thanks a lot bye bye